That must be the new polyam thing. Hi, finally, I can show you the poly end play. And if I were to describe it in a very short sentence, I guess I would call it a groove box or a sequencer, definitely a generative sequencer, definitely a all in one complete songwriting box, definitely a master sequencer for all of your synths box. It is not a sampler. It is not a poly end tracker 2.0 or an upgrade from the poly end tracker although it is a sister to the Polyend Tracker. It is not a turtle. It is not a best of Tom Petty CD. It is not one of those orange cones that they put in public bathrooms. And it is not a Toyota Corolla. I've decided that deductive descriptions is probably the best way to cover gear from now on. So for the rest of this video, I'll just be telling you what it is not. Seriously though, guys, it is a very powerful groove box. And in my opinion, it is the most powerful sequencer I have ever laid hands on. Just like the Polyend Tracker, all of the data is stored on a little SD card and it operates as a sister to the Polyend Tracker or a brother. It's the exact same size and they look very fancy next to one another. This is probably not in the official description, but in my opinion, what makes the Polyend Play so unique is that it uses randomness and generative algorithms to help get you started and to inspire you to finish a song. And it does that very well. It immediately is the most powerful piece of hardware to create IDM or break core or glitch core or any music like that. And as an IDM musician for the last 25 years, it actually feels as if when making these algorithms, they reverse engineered how beats are programmed. Rather than just putting in some ratchet or beat repeat or glitch functions, it's as if they listen to thousands and thousands of hours of Aphex Twin and Square Pusher and Music and the Flash Bulb and Venetian Snares and Bogdan Rigzinski and thought to themselves, all right, how exactly are these sounds happening in these beats? And how can we put them into an algorithm to make it easier for our customers to make similar sounds? And in doing that, they hit it out of the ballpark. This is definitely one of those devices where everybody's going to be using it in their own way and creating their own workflow to use. And I'm actually pretty excited to see Ziv or Loop Pop's video to see how he uses it. And I believe that me and him are the only YouTubers who have pre-release versions of this. So you should definitely check out his video after watching mine because he'll probably have a radically different way of using it than I did. And the link will be in the description shortly after this video is released. If you're one of my subscribers and you probably know that since the beginning of the company, I've always been a massive fan of Polyend and they just keep raising the bar. So I'm just gonna stop talking. Without further ado, let's check this thing out. As the name would suggest in the Polyend Play, this is actually the first sample-based synthesizer and sequencer made for Broadway. I think the name is actually a play on the intuitiveness and ease of use of the interface. I think you could get started very easily with this without ever having to glance at a manual, and there are some advanced features in which you will have to watch my video or Blue Pop's video or read that manual. And we're gonna be going over some of those today. But first we need a sound. So I'm going to press this rotary encoder and go to samples. And I'm just gonna load a kit and I'll go to, oh, techno kit. And I will go to kicks and just press load folder and it will load an entire folder of kicks. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna do the exact same thing with techno kit snare load the folder. I'm going to go back and I'm going to load a kit of the Techno Kit hi-hat. Great. 
So now we have all of these things. Okay, so I'm gonna press down this first step and I'm gonna press sample and we have kick01. If I press sample again, we have the sample folder and I'm gonna turn that to kick and now it will only have kicks to choose from. And I'm just gonna do the four and the four thing. On my second row, I'm gonna choose the sample folder for snares. On my third row, I'm going to select the sample folder for hi-hats. Okay, so I'm going to select the row where I've put my hi-hats and I'm going to press fill and I'm going to fill 50% of them randomly. Or I could have a Euclidean fill, so like, maybe eight, there we go, or 16, which would be every single one. The hi-hat volume's a little high, so I could just turn that down. But more interestingly, I could go to randomize and I can randomize the volume. And if I like it, I can just press save and then it applies the randomization to the pattern. Now the reason I loaded up kits instead of just three different samples is because the randomize function and some other functions work really cleverly with those folders. So for example, I could randomize the sample in folder. Let's go to 16%. And if I wanted to go to 100%, it would sound like this. So I could do that, I could save it. I like how that sounds. I could randomize the sample length. I could randomize how much reverb and delay goes into it. So I'm gonna hit solo here so we only hear the hi-hats. And speaking of randomization, we can hit chance here. And remember how I pressed this twice and it brought me to the different alternate use of the knob? If you don't like doing that, you could actually disable that and only do it here, or you could do both like I am here. So I am going to have the chance, 50% chance of it playing a step. And this is kind of universal. Like this will make it generative for as long as this track is playing. There is no saving it into pattern like there is with randomize. And of course, like I mentioned, by just selecting the entire row over here, we can change things universally and we don't have to randomize or we don't have to play with chances. We can have things sound however we want. Okay, so the four on the four thing is getting a little bit boring. I'm gonna press the kick row and I'm going to press fill and Let's go to kick. There are actually little fill presets that kind of help get us started. So I'm gonna go to drum and bass four. I'm gonna do the same thing over at snare, but we're gonna move over to snare drum and bass four. increase my play step chance and I kind of like the way this sounds however I would like this to have some reverb and maybe change some of these kicks up a bit and keep in mind that this is just my own organizational process we could put any sample in any grid if I wanted a hi-hat in the kick grid I can do that easily and vice versa I'm going to select all of my hi-hats and I'm going to go to randomize and I'm going to go to something called nuke which kind of gives it a bunch of different perimeters that you could keep on trying. And then they have Duke Nuke, which goes even further. <laughs> Let's look at some unique features of this sequencer. I'm gonna select the hi-hats again. I can change the tempo to two thirds, one half of the speed of the rest of the sequence or very slow, I could pause it, or very, very fast, eight times the speed. What's even crazier is that I could change the swing of each track individually. Okay, so by deselecting everything, I could speed up my tempo overall, and I'm gonna load a sample that is a little bit more melodic so we could play with some of those features. I'm gonna set the swing of everything to 60%. I'm gonna randomly fill the melody pattern here. I'm gonna turn the volume down. 
turn the attack up. I'm going to randomize the pitch within one octave. I'm going to make my sample shorter. Now I'm going to hit Shift, Master Effects, and I'm going to change my reverb to something way out there, like Uncharted. Now obviously this doesn't sound all that melodic, but what we can do is go into Scales and put everything into a scale filter that would be, let's go into just minor. And then I'm gonna randomize it to two octaves. So I'm gonna take the track length of my melody here and I'm gonna bring it down to 14. And now we'll have a polyrhythmic sequence. And I can also do that with the snare here, for example. I'll bring it to 18. Now the snare will be a little delayed. I could also make the track length much longer. I could make the melody line 64 steps, for example, which would go four pages away. And you could go between your different pages by hitting shift, and then you have your different pages of each pattern. But I am just going to stick with 24 for now. You could of course do this while it's playing, but I think it's more fun to have an element of surprise. And then I'm going to randomize the samples in folder. And let's hear it. And of course, each one of these samples can have their own cutoff and resonance and attack and decay and sample start and sample end and overdrive and bit reduction. But let's just give everything a bit of a high pass filter. I'm gonna find a nice bass sound. When you're searching for samples, you can just click one and then hear it. This one will work. So I want my sample to be in the bass folder. I'm gonna change the tempo of this to one quarter. And let's hear it. Nice. Sounds great. And for getting tired of this, like, weird piano sound sounding the same in every single sequence, we can go over to Chance and we can have it always play a random note. All right, so we're only hearing a shaker track that I put in and I'm gonna hold down one of these. And I'm gonna hit repeat type straight three hits, four hits, and that basically just adds a ratcheting or a glitch effect to it. And so we can make these very deliberate if we want. What's unique about the repeat and ratcheting effect and something that I've frankly never seen before is that we can select one of these here and have it repeat and just click straight. And then we could have it go eight hits per step, or we could have it how many steps do we have remaining? We have like four steps remaining. So we could have it go six hits per four steps. So it allows you to set a repeat or glitch or ratchet effect for one step, but the repeating continues for as long as you set it after that step ends. And beyond that, we have different repeat types. Like we could change it to fade or erase. I mean, this is just crazy. <laughs> By the way, in the track length here, we have all sorts of crazy play modes. So we could play it in reverse, of course. And so we have forward and reverse, and then we have things like first steps and go-go and two-stepper and thumper and double-step and all these really crazy algorithms for how they trigger notes. And I think that some of these sequenced play modes are a lot more intelligent than just randomizing. There's definitely a lot of clever determinism in the algorithms 
dare I say, some of them are even using a Turing machine effect, if anybody's familiar with what that is in the modular world. Like, they just sound too deterministically good to be random luck. So I'm gonna put various different play modes on every single track here. And <laughs> now this is just crazy. By the way, we've barely even opened the book yet. This is just one pattern. Even more importantly, is inside every pattern, we can have up to four different variations. Let me explain how that works. So it's easy to keep track of what's happening. I'm going to select everything, and I'm just going to move the play mode back to normal forward. And by the way, speaking of selecting, if I press shift and I could just sort of paint what I want selected here and then change the pitch of those things or whatever. So let's. And so considering that you could just paint select things and randomize all these variables and add chance to all these variables and the pattern variations and everything else, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that this is probably the most powerful, no, not probably, this is easily the most powerful generative sequencer that mankind has produced thus far. But back to pattern variations. Each one of these horizontal tracks has a variation. And these are the different variations just by pressing variation over here. And we can do things like this. I realize that this probably sounds unnecessary or overkill for your songwriting workflow, but when you consider using this much data in something like a live performance where you have all of this pattern data being extrapolated over the course of an hour or two hours, it makes this a very, very powerful instrument to bring on tour. I put in a little Kalimba chimey sample right here and randomized it, and then these are my drums. And now let's go into perform mode, speaking of live performances. So we're hit with this rainbow, and I'm gonna select every single track, even though we could select them all individually, and just go through these with you. So this is pitch. And this brings it up. Now we have a low pass filter, and then a high pass filter. Then we have overdrive and bit reduction. And now we have rearrangers. And like I said, you could only apply these to certain tracks. So if I want my drums to stay normal, And then we have the repeat or ratcheting. <laughs> then we have delay and reverb. And finally at the end here we have a looper. And these work in conjunction with the other effects. And then when we want the perform effects to end, we just hit perform and we are back to our sequence. And it saves what we put into the performance so we could bring them back in if we want to, so.
And I know that more than a few of my subscribers are big Polyend Tracker fans. And I know that a whole lot of my subscribers were aware that Polyend was coming out with some sort of black box sometime soon, and they thought that that was going to be the next Polyend Tracker, the Polyend Tracker 2.0, Make 2, whatever. And a couple of them are even kind of annoyed that they had just bought a Polyend Tracker and now an upgraded version was coming out. The Polyend Play plays really well with the Polyend Tracker. It's almost like a sister instrument. Check this out. So there's a mode that just kind of automatically gives the Polyend Tracker the MIDI information that it needs to work as an instrument that can be triggered by the MIDI mode from the Polyend Play. Before we dive into MIDI mode, I want to show you something that I probably should have shown you much earlier in this video, but I kind of just learned how to play with this thing on my own, which is always an amazing thing that I love about an instrument, to not have to open a manual and to just be able to intuitively make my own workflow. And some things that will be super important to me will not be important to you and vice versa. Let me select this note here. This is a bass note, right? Okay. And then if we click view, we could just... So to go to MIDI mode, which in this case will control what's happening on the tracker, we hit shift and patterns or shift and audio MIDI and all this turns purple and now we have... We could also experiment with chords. These chords create polyphony on the tracker by using different tracks and if we were to go to like a major 13th or minor 13th, we'd be using seven of the eight tracker tracks. And so if you wanted to make some crazy pattern on the tracker and some crazy pattern on the play, know that in order to add advanced chords, you're going to be using most of the polyphony from the Polyend tracker in this mode. If you're not familiar with the tracker, it is an instant classic. Feel free to go back and watch some of my videos on that or some of the many videos on YouTube about that. And so on the tracker, we just kind of have a wave table here. And we could even go down to granular mode here. And of course, while this is running, we could pop right back over to the pattern mode and unmute these. As you might have guessed, this works with virtually anything that has a MIDI input, and it has 16 channels of DIN MIDI out and 16 channels of USB MIDI out. So this could be a very powerful central hub for your whole studio full of synthesizers, if that's what you were looking for. I 
like this is going to be a decently long and monotonous video, even though I haven't even scratched the surface on this thing. So I kind of wanted to circle back to where I started with the name, Play. It was named Play because you could do things like this. We have an empty pattern with nothing in it, and we could just press Fill with these four selected, and then we can just choose a beat. So let's choose Drum and Bass 5 and press Play. And if we press fill again, we could change and randomize those drum samples from the drum folders. Until we find something that we kind of like. And of course, we could change the beat too. I actually kind of like that. And then you could just select the hi-hats, for example, and you can randomize whatever. and then maybe give a 30% chance that it will play a random sample on the hi-hat. I have my Arturia key step here. I'm gonna press these four channels and press live record. And let's add some bass to that. So out of all the craziness and vastness and expandability and advanced features, the most important feature of all is that this gets you started writing music and inspires you to keep doing so and to keep editing these deterministic randomized patterns to your liking and finishing songs because that's what it's all about. version you're seeing in this video is a late stage beta because I am shooting this about two weeks earlier than I normally would before a video comes out because I still have yet to go to Miami to shoot the intro sequence. A lot of times these big Hollywood productions don't shoot in a linear fashion because they have to work around the busy schedules of the talent. I really didn't have any noticeable problems with the beta. Everything worked pretty much fine, but it's worth knowing that if you buy this, the version you get will be a little bit refined and maybe even have an extra feature or two. On one hand, I wanted to say that Polyan took some of the best features features from the Tracker, the Seek, and the Medusa and combined it to make an all-in-one groove box arranger, but it's so much more than that. There's just this experience where the user can hold down a button or two and twist a knob and the functionality just makes sense. And it's in a painstakingly intentional Goldilocks zone that allows you to still make the track your own. It's not as if it's writing something for you or as if you're playing with a preset or just a bunch of random values. One of my favorite things that I own is the now discontinued Poly and Seek and the Play's MIDI mode, without a doubt, completely replaces the Seek's functionality in my studio. The Seek is still a beautiful, wooden, powerful sequencer that looks beautiful on top of my disc clave or piano, but Functionality-wise, it doesn't have a fraction of what the Play's MIDI mode has. Are there any cons? Yeah, I can imagine that some people might expect there to be a sampler the way that the Tracker has one. I personally don't really care because I have my own hardware and workflow for recording things. I could count on one hand how many times I've sampled something on an MPC through the direct sampling input rather than recording it somewhere else and importing it through an SD card or something. Like every single piece of music hardware that comes out, I imagine that some people are going to complain about a lack of CV or gate output. That being said, the Poly and Poly 2 is an affordable MIDI to CV powerhouse that can connect to the Play via USB. Sometimes a double touch on top of a knob can get a little bit confusing or happen on accident. However, you can disable that entirely and use 
these buttons and this encoder right here to do that as well if it bothers you. It's definitely worth pointing out that Polyand has become one of those companies that couples their firmware updates with user input and what people like and dislike or what people even want or don't want. The Medusa, for example, is on version 4.1 and has become a drastically more powerful and featured synthesizer than when it was initially sold. I believe that the tracker being less than two years old has already had four or five major updates and added tons of new features. So how much is it going to cost? Well, the play here will set you back $800. Whether that's a good value or not is up to you. I personally was expecting to hear a number in the $1,200 range with chip shortages and inflation. So when I heard $799 is the retail price, I was pleasantly surprised. Whenever trying to figure out the value of a piece of gear, I usually look at other pieces of gear that do similar things and see how much they cost. But I can't really compare this to the Deluge or the Polyan Tracker even, or the Akai Force or the Octatrack. It is just too much an instrument of its own design but that's a really good thing. Listen, I know that I simp hard for Polyend, and I want to assure you that this isn't the case of them throwing a bunch of money at me in exchange for a glowing review. The reason I like them so much overall is because their gear makes me make music. Whenever I review a Polyend product, I typically have trouble getting through the video because I get too distracted making my own songs. And the proof is in the pudding, per se. If you listen to Our Simulacra, my last electronic album is The Flashbulb, you'll hear the Medusa all over it. I want to go on about the play, but this is by far the last time you'll see it on this channel. I decided that if I were to go to NAMM, I would spend two weeks writing music in beautiful locations around the country by traveling via road between Atlanta and Los Angeles. I have no idea how much music I'll write or if it'll be any good, but after having this for about a month, I've decided that the play will be my companion for that trip. So a month from now, you'll see a video with a bunch of beautiful landscape footage and music to go along with it, or you'll read an article in Pitchfork about how I fell down the Grand Canyon and got eaten alive by coyotes. Either way, cool. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel. If there's anything you want me to cover in the future, let me know in the comments. I think that this video will be coming out on a Thursday, which is my streaming day, typically. So tonight, I will be answering any additional questions you have about the play and maybe doing another demo. And of course, if you want access to a bunch of pro audio assets, ambisonic field recordings, unreleased music, a Discord server with game servers and monthly songwriting challenges, then my Patreon is for you, and you can join for as little as $1. See you later.